New Blue excels at making simple to use, effective, non-resource hungry and very practical plugins. Here's another great example of a tool that does a really useful job in just a few clicks. Selective Focus from New Blue's Video Essentials 5 collection. It's for those times when you want to just defocus a specific area of the frame, perhaps to simulate a shallow depth of field, perhaps to focus attention on a subject or perhaps just for creative reasons. As is often the case, you can no doubt achieve the same end result using your NLE's built-in functions, but Selective Focus lets you get great results very quickly from a single plug-in. Let's take a look. We're going to use this clip of an old steam locomotive pulling into a station on the Swanage Railway in southern England. This clip was shot with a very inexpensive standard definition handheld camera on full automatic settings. I'd like to give it a little more character by simulating a shallow depth of field, something you're unlikely to achieve with such a basic camera. That will also help me to divert attention away from the junk in the bottom of the frame. So let's fire up Selective Focus and look at the controls we have available to us. As with other new blue plugins, things are very straightforward. We have four target boxes that define the shape and position of the defocus area, a control to adjust the roundness of the selection, one to feather the edge, a control to adjust the amount of defocusing to be applied, and finally a checkbox that allows us to invert the selected area and another one that lets us look at the selected area by masking it. So let's start to create our defocused area in this clip. I find it helps to start with maximum blur, no curve and no feather until I have roughly the right shape. Now I want the defocused area to cover the whole of this support and to extend right up to the edge of the nearest rail. So let's start in the top right hand corner. Now the bottom right, the bottom left. Notice how the edge now lines up with the edge of the rail. And finally the top left. Now I want the whole of this area of the frame to be in focus, so I'll move that point right into the corner. I don't want to curve this mask too much, but I will add just a touch to nicely fold into the corners. OK, that's a good start, but there are still areas that aren't covered. Let's make a quick check by turning the test mask on. In fact, I've overshot the mark in a couple of places. But this is where the feather control comes in very handy. If I raise Feather up to around 40, it just takes the edge off and gives me a much more usable selection. So I'll uncheck Invert Mask, and now you can see that I've pretty well covered the area that I wanted. All I need to do now is to drop the blur level to something more realistic. I'll make a couple more tweaks to the selection area, and there you go. It's by no means perfect, but it does a good job of making this shot a little more interesting, and it only took a few seconds. Of course you can keyframe your selection area or any other setting so that your blurred area changes over time, perhaps to follow an object. And if your NLE allows it, you can add further instances of the plugin to blur more than one area of your frame if you need to. So that's Selective Focus. Very handy and very simple to use. All it needs now is you to put it to use on your footage.